Hello, everybody. We go to our next presentation. This is David Pleasance of Commodore UK. He will be talking about his books. His books. I will pass out these various paper, uh, pa uh, some paperwork on his Commodore Amiga books that he is selling. And also, he's going to be talking about the Amiga Global Initiative. And uh, you can speak to David afterwards. Here's a microphone if you want to uh, talk to him. He can hear you speak. We can hear him speak. And everything. hopefully everything will go to plan. So, <laughs> OK, so hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon to you. It's an afternoon in your, uh, your part of the world. Um, and welcome to my presentation. And thank you so very much for giving me the opportunity to do this. Um, I think what I'd like to do first of all is to just spend two minutes um, because everybody seems to refer to me as Commodore UK, which of course I was, but I had 12 and a half years with Commodore in various positions. And I think it might be worthwhile you understanding quite how diverse my role was within Commodore, which I think then gives me a, a, a better perspective to to approach my projects. Uh, anyway, basically, I, I joined Commodore in 1983. And ironically, I, I was recruited specifically to sell Commodore Pets, which was the only business product we had at the time, into the retail market. They were selling pets to individual companies, and um, uh, but never into the retail market. And they, their dilemma at that particular time was, do they hire somebody who knows about computers uh, and nothing about retail or somebody who knows about retail and nothing about computers. And they went to a, uh, a, 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 a an agency, recruitment agency, who said, get somebody who understands the retail market, which was my background. Anyway, I was with Commodore for about three months because I'd been living in Australia prior to joining Commodore in the UK. And I was on my mission to get the pet into the retail market and I'd spent about three months traveling the whole of the UK looking at the retail market and seeing who was the best company to do business with anyway cut a long story short I'd been there I think it was 10 or 11 weeks and I got a phone call from the lady that interviewed me and she said David do you remember when um, I interviewed you I told you that things happened very quickly in Commodore and I said yes she said well um, your star has just risen she said, we've just discovered that Commodore will not be producing anywhere near sufficient product in the, in the form of pets to open a new market. So therefore, my job was no longer in existence. However, the 64 had just been released a few months earlier. This was uh, July of 1983. And the 64 was going crazy. The person who was looking after their national accounts uh, had just left. So the, the job was open and they gave it to me. So I find myself within three months selling 64 and the bit 20, of course, and all other things. Now, I stayed in Commodore until 19, January of 1990, during which time I had lots of success, including doing the bundles like the, the Amiga Batman pack and stuff like that. Um, anyway, 1989, end of 89, there was a job became vacant as general manager of Commodore Electronics Limited in Basel, Switzerland. Now, Commodore Electronics Limited, was the holding company for the whole group. And the reason it was in uh, in Switzerland, and particularly in this canton called Aish, was because we paid zero tax there. So everything that was ever produced by any of the subsidiaries or any of the corporations, everything went through um, Commodore Basel, Commodore Switzerland. But my responsibility there was I was selling to 35 countries where we did not have an operating op uh, a company. So, uh, or basically all the export businesses, which for me was absolutely the most perfect job in the world because A, I'm a hunter, and B, I love travelling. And so, you know, I, I found myself in the best job in the world. Anyway, um, in uh, January 2nd or 3rd of 1992, I was at a general manager's meeting in Frankfurt uh, with all the other general managers, and we'd finished our meeting and I was just about to leave. And Mehdi Ali said, Pleasant, sit down. I'm giving you your wish. And I said, what's that? And he said, I've got lots of wishes. And he said, 
he said, you've been asking me for three years to go into the US and sort them out. And I said, yeah, you bet I have. And he said, right, he said, I want you on the seven o'clock flight out of London. You are now vice president of consumer products in Commodore Inc., which was the, um, the sales company in America um, with the president there. Um, it was Jim Dion, who was Canadian guy. I don't know if you, any of you guys knew him. Um, anyway, um, cut a long story short, um, uh, and I must tell you this, is that he insisted that I was on a 7 o'clock flight out of London that same day, remembering I was in Frankfurt <laughs> at 12 o'clock that day. And so I got a 7 o'clock flight because he made main book it, and that happened to be Concord. So um, <laughs> I'm unbeknown to him because he preferred all the time it didn't matter to him. I got to fly Concord once, which was rather nice. No, anyway, I ended up being vice president of consumer products at Commodore Inc. for a year in 1992. At the end of 92, I went to Medial and I said, right, I can't do any more here for the moment. And he said, what are you talking about? And I said, look, I've just sorted out the mess that there was here. And the mess was caused by Jim Dion had sold uh, I, I use that word loosely, and sold a whole lot of products and, and stuffed all the major retail channels with a product that they couldn't sell. And he'd done that on a sale or return agreement. And that product was the CDTV. So if you can imagine, I had to go to, the, go to all these companies with a letter signed by Jim Dean, which I did not know about, giving them sale or return options on CDTV. And can you imagine Sears selling a CDTV? Yeah. I mean, it was absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I'm, I had to take all the product back. I had no option because it was there in writing from the president of the company. But I got them in exchange to give me orders for Amiga 500s, and I gave them their own pack in return. So I got us trading again. Anyway, I went to Medi Ali and said, right, Medi, my job in the, in the US is okay. It's finished for now. And he said, what are you talking about? I said, look, Medi, I've just taken back a whole lot of product, which we should never have taken back. We have no choice. Now, if I sell these guys any more product, you and I both know in a few months' time, we've got the Amiga 1200 launching, and they're going to ask me to take all their 500s back, which I'm not intending to do at all. So I said, it's best if I leave them, let them reorder. If they reorder, it's on them. So I went back to, actually, I went back to Commodore Electronics Limited, although I was working out of London that time. And then I was made forced to take over as UK MD. But the reason I'm telling you all that is because you can then see I've got a much more diverse background at Commodore than I think most people kind of realised. So whilst I clearly I was you know, MD, or actually joint MD, Commodore UK, because I, I am not a financial guy and I insisted under the circumstances of Commodore being in such dire financial trouble when I was asked to take over as MD that I had a, a co-MD which was Colin Proudfoot. Um, some of you may have met Colin. He he goes to Army West. I know pretty regularly. He lives in the States. He lives in, in near you guys. Anyway, I just wanted to let you know because I think you, that make, it gives you a bit of under, better understanding, really, of what my background is. I was very diverse, and um, which I'm extremely grateful for. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I had the best job in the world. And I, I could not wait to get to work every day, even though it was a real challenge working with cretins like Manny Alley. Um, who made every decision known to man the wrong one. Um, but anyway, I just want to let you know that so you, you have a better understanding of, of things. Um, okay, I'm, I'm just very briefly going to talk about the books because most of you know I've, I wrote Commodore the Inside Story, which was it has been a huge success, and I'm really proud of that book, uh, in which there are a lot of people from within Commodore who also write chapters so that the perspective is clearly from Commodore inside, but it's from other people inside, engineers and other people from different divisions and so on. And that's been hugely successful for me. And, and in fact, I'm just having the German translation printed as we speak. That will be being released in June. And I've today, literally today, um, quite genuinely signed an agreement of having the, the Commodore inside story um, translated into Polish, and that's happening in the next two or three months. So that's been a very successful book for me. I then um, teamed up with uh, Trevor Dickinson. I think most of you know Trevor, very, very um, staunch, a huge Amiga fan, and uh, founder of Aeon Technologies and so on. And we we started writing a book called, uh, which I call From Vultures to Vampires, 
Um, and the reason for that is that we wanted to tell a story of what happened to Commodore's trademarks, his patents and logos and uh, IPs and so on, after uh, ESCOM bought um, uh, the whole lot at the auction in New York, which I was at, of course. And we started to write this book. And really, before we knew it, we didn't realize just what we'd got ourselves into because we ended up having so much material that we kept uncovering hmm. that we ended up having to do a volume two, which in some ways was a bit embarrassing. <laughs> and then on top of that, we were doing volume two. We reached a stage where we were 550 pages of volume two, which meant we had no other option but to uh, write a volume three. Now, I can tell you, volume two has just been sent away for printing. Uh, some of you might know I was quite ill last year. I, I lost about three months I, I spent some time in the hospital and had some minor surgery and to be honest with you I, I, I missed about three months of, of productivity and during which time I missed the printing deadline for Christmas which of course um, I'm sure most of you know Christmas is the time of the year when everybody um, wants their book and the, well, the publishers want their books out for, for the <laughs> present buying time um, so anyway cut a long story short in the meantime all the pricing went up through the roof which meant, um, if I'm perfectly candid, that I stood a good, a good risk of losing a lot of money. Because the pricing from the time I'd sold the books, pre-sold the books, and priced it to the cost now. So I've been, in a way, I've been stalling. But what happened is that I have a, a printing agent based in London, really good guy. The first ever book we did was printed in, um, actually was printed in Malt, as was volume one of, of um, Vultures of Vampires. Um, anyway, he's now uh, found me a printer in in uh, in, in India, uh, and and this printer in India, though they're fully digital and the quality and everything's guaranteed, they're a lot cheaper um, than doing anything in in Europe. Um, however, the, the payoff is that it's about a four week extra delay in shipment because of the distance. Anyway, what that means is that I, I'm expecting ETA of Volume Two. To be somewhere around end of June, um, so which means that we'll be shipping them out um, during the first week or two of July. Volume three is literally has just been sent uh, for proofreading, and um, Dave McBurty, McBurty is doing uh, proofreading. He's in the middle of proofreading it now, so I expect that book to be available probably a few weeks later, probably July, maybe into August. But anyway, they're on their way. Uh, and I think that's important to let everybody know because a lot of people have pre-ordered the book and have been waiting very patiently. Thank you. I do appreciate your patience. Uh, it was mostly out of my hands, and I promise you I would rather not have been ill. <laughs> I would rather have been able to deliver the books on time. However, that's where we are, and that's where we stand now. So hopefully that's got you up to date. Um, I did send uh, Robert um, a message that um, I've shipped some of, volume of um, Commodore the Inside Story, and volume one of um, from Vultures to Vampires. I've shipped some to Miami. I've got family there. I shipped them in bulk and I'm I'm offering a special offer if anybody wants to buy the books. If you haven't got them now, um, I sent Robert the notice. They're $22.50 each as opposed to £29. And there's free shipping because I was doing it from the States. Just out of interest, if I send one book from the UK to the USA, it's eighteen pounds and forty pence, so <laughs> it's a hell of a saving. Um, or if you can buy both books for forty dollars and it's free shop shipping. Um, so anyway, okay, we're up to date with all of that. And now I'd like to get onto what I'm really here to talk to you about, which I'm very very excited about. And as you can see up on the screen there, this is introducing a brand new AGA for 2023. Now, mostly when people read that, it means that they think it means a brand new chipset. No, no, no. Um, I'm afraid it's not uh, not quite like that. Um, it is, in fact, the Amiga Global Alliance, which is for the very first time, uh, the Amiga fans and Commodore developers, animators, repairers, wholesalers, shops, magazines, authors, component suppliers, webmasters, musicians, 3D artists, uh, and more all over the world collaborating together. Sorry, I just jumped on too quickly there. Bear with me. 
Okay. Yeah, this is the image here, um, which I'm very proud of this image. I work with a guy called Paul Kitching. He does all my um, 3D rendering stuff, and he's absolutely amazing and a wonderful guy. So basically what, what we're talking about is the Mega Global Alliance. It is an idea that by bringing everybody together, um, we can raise funds which will get reinvested back into the community, into the things that we know we all need. It's an annual fee-based um, project. So what happens with the money? Well, the first thing is that we are building, in fact, it's, we're already commenced building, the most comprehensive website ever. This is the website which will have everything you can possibly want to know about Commodore and Amiga products, where to go to get things done, you know, who's doing what, who's producing what, when it's coming out, what events there are, and all of those sorts of things. Um, so building and maintaining the website is where this money is going to go. It's, we've registered AGA directory for the website. I mean, I was extremely lucky because they only just released directory um, as a domain um, name, and I just got it within a day or two of them launching it. And I think AGA directory is perfect for what this actually is. Hmm. So building the most comprehensive website, um, covering the full diversity and wealth of the amazing talent that, that our community has to offer. A complete and comprehensive resource with listings and URL links to every individual or company who offer any service to the community, wherever you are located in the world. Um, listing all clubs and groups who subscribe. Every single individual Amiga fan, irrespective of nationality, language, ethnicity or religious belief, are encouraged and indeed welcome to join this community. In fact, as an individual by, by participating, um, you will be listed with links uh, uh, to your um, to you. Um, so if you, anytime you're holding meetings like you guys meet you guys meeting today, the whole world would know about this meeting today, not just a few of you who talk to each other. So you now have a truly global advertising and marketing reach. Before we talk about what other this, other um, issues this product offers, all the creative designers and technical wizards community, here are some details that we are incorporating in the website. Right, there's an open forum. We're going to give all these things their own particular name, but open forum, in other words, a group and individual discussion channel. But this is going to be one where we are not going to be allowing all of these, these cretins who keep um, writing under the under pseudonyms, of course, because they're too bloody cowardly to put their own name in, writing very negative things. We're going to make sure that we can weed that out because that is just an appalling kind of very uh, second grade byproduct of, of this fantastic community of ours. And I'm sure you all agree on that. Mm -hmm. We have a marketplace somewhere where you can buy and sell at the portal for new and used items. We're going to have cats. Commodore Amiga technical support. And by that, uh, I'll, I'll cover that in more detail in a moment, but by that, we're having people who actually know what they're talking about, that, that, that our individual um, Amiga fans can reach out to and get answers properly. Um, a calendar, obviously, a global events diary, very, very important. We're also establishing an archive and a library, long-term storage with, with accessibility. Lots of goodies, kindly donated by fellow AGA subscribers. Again, I'll come back onto that in a moment. And the database and directory, listing of contacts by URL, e email, phone, et cetera, et cetera, where you can find anything and everything. Plus anything sensible you subscribers ask for. This is your community, this is your project, and we will build into it exactly what you want. Now, we have appointed a team of highly qualified website IT professionals uh, to build uh, um, AGA directory. It's headed by um, Paolo de Ursu. He is the founder um, of uh, Passione Amiga, which is the, the, the Amiga dedicated magazine in Italy. And he has a company which builds websites uh, on a professional basis, for, has done so for a very long time. He is the lead developer. There's also Steve Morehouse, Managing Director of Albany Computers in the UK. Um, Justin Mitchell, he's the founder of 
Bread Box uh, Commodore Computer Museum um, in uh, in New Zealand. And in fact, getting back to, um, uh, I was saying they're going to people going to be donating. He has got thousands, and I mean thousands, of products that he he is um, importing into our websites. So anybody can access them. We're talking about uh, uh, games. We're talking about um, software, professional software. Anything you think of, he's been collecting it a long time. He's desperate to get it somewhere where it can actually be accessed. Uh, just skip one. Right. Also, Derek Nags. He's um, uh, UK based. Uh, Elliot Christensen. He's a podcast and marketer in say Tim and Equality's list. He's based in the USA. And Dave Kirkwood is also um, based in the UK. Now the thing is that these are these uh, six guys. Not only are they all total professionals in web web designing, they're all huge Amiga fans. And for me, what I wanted to do was to get a global representation, which I think you can see we've done, um, and also people who, who really want to be involved. So and they are working on on our website as we speak. So the web, website main name is AGA Directory. The, um, we've got Amiga uh, Global Alliance .com registered and info at Amiga Global Alliance .com is registered email address. Okay, this is our logo. Now, I've had lots of conversations with people, but I wished I hadn't started because you can't please everybody. Okay. And there are so many people who keep saying to me, oh, why haven't you got the boing ball on there? Why haven't you got the red and white on there? And all this kind of stuff. Well, let me explain that. I'll give you my answer to the reasons. Is that I believe that we can make this particular um, logo. I, I am open to change if somebody really has some major problem with it. I'm, I'm not saying this is it, take it or leave it. But essentially, this is what it is and, and the reasons why. Is because I want this to become the center of excellence, the trademark of excellence, everything to do with Commodore and Amiga. If you are displaying this, on your on anything that you make or produce it means that you are in the top notch and that people can tr trust and rely on it. what i really want to see is i would like i would like to see a time when this logo is accepted as a guarantee of quality and excellence so we can usurp the need for the logos amiga and commonal logos that have all been under lawsuits uh, and the subject of my three books about the vultures of vampires and not have to pay anybody anything for the use of the bloody things. I think it's outrageous that we have to. So what I'm suggesting is that if we all get together, let's form AGA and let's have this logo, which means that people can tr trust us and not have to pay a penny for it. I hope you agree with that principle. Okay, now we get to the part that matters. How much will it cost? Okay, here's a table of annual subscriptions. Obviously, anybody wants to support the project, any donation, welcome. And that goes from a dollar to a million bucks. We take it all. Individual founding member, this is going to be £38 a year. Now, I've messed around with this for quite a while, but the reason I've come up with £38 is because this is the 38th anniversary of Amiga. And it just makes sense. Um, it's, a, it's a reasonable amount. It's not expensive. And, and when you see what I'm offering you in return, as an individual member, remember this, and I'm not talking about clubs, I'm not talking about um, manufacturers or retailers, this is just individual members, of which I want the most. That's that's my target market, mostly. Um, with this, uh, if you join, um, and I'm, I'm launching a Kickstarter in, uh, literally in the next couple of weeks, um, there'll be an, a special introductory launch offer a bonus bumper bundle, which I'm coming on to shortly, what you're going to get for your £38. Okay, if you are an individual provider of any service to the community, in other words, you, you, do, um, you do repairs or you do um, recapping or anything like that, anything that you offer, £75 a year because you're making money out of the community and you need to be able to put something back into the community. You come back onto all this. And that will include the bonus bumper bundle under deluxe, which we'll come back onto. Um, if you are a company providing services, it's under pounds a year. Um, if you are a wholesale distributor company, um, 
we obviously got bigger turnover. It's £120 a year. Um, high street retailer, £120 a year. Online retailer, 150 Why the difference? Because it costs a lot of money to have a high street retail outlet. And, and I'm trying to be as fair as I can. And, and, and I understand the retail market. So there's a reason. Okay, uh, now then, this is an important one. Magazines, printed or online, £250. Wow, that's a lot of money. No, it's not, because we are going to be trading the cost of their membership for advertising and promotions in their magazines. Uh, Amiga Addict have already signed up for it, and I'm in conversation with others as well. But you, can you see where I'm coming from? The amount is set at a higher figure, but no money will actually change hands. It will mean that as we go through with the AGA concept and products come onto market, we can advertise and promote them in the magazines because it's already been prepaid by this methodology. Okay, we've already sponsored, uh, we've been sponsored by Amiga 38, which uh, I don't know if you know that that's been announced, that that's happening in October in Germany. Um, I was at uh, the Amiga 37 event uh, in uh, October last year. It was so successful that um, on the first day, they they saw there were 1,500 uh, attendees and they couldn't get any more in. They could have sold three times the level of tickets. That was on the first day. Phenomenal event. Anyway, they sponsored us and we sponsored them. So that's that's already something that's happening that you can count on. Um, this, is a, this is a perfect example of the collaboration that AGA stands for. I hope you can see that. Okay. Now, I'm also encouraging sponsorship. Uh, basic sponsor, negotiable from 300 to 600 pounds a year. Major sponsor, 750 to 1200 a year. Premier sponsor, negotiable. Okay, so what happens to the money? Building and maintaining the website. That's very important. Um, administration, running costs, expenses, and governance. Because this whole thing needs you know, considerable governance. Which, for, from my point of view, having been as, um, how can I put this without that saying, with being completely transparent in everything I've ever done, um, for me, governance is absolutely vital. We've got to make certain that everything that we do can be scrutinized and accounted for. Uh, I think I've just gone up again by mistake. Right, here we go. Now, at this moment in time, we are intending to allocate a minimum of 65% of all the revenues that come back into, uh, into the AJ project, back into the community. Um, and I think that is one of the most fundamental things about AJ that I believe will make it successful. So these funds, we're going to put back in to allow new products as hardware and software to convince developers, early stage startups, how many people do you know who say, I want to write a game, but I can't get any funding for it? I've got an idea for a new piece of hardware, but I can't get any funding for it. Well, we're going to fill that gap. And that's where the money coming into AGA can be put back into the community to grow our community. Also funds to promote those products for people and campaigns, advertising, marketing, social media, club events. We've already begun appointing an advisory board. This is where I'm coming back to the governance side to be made up of significant industry figures who will ensure we spend wisely the money that we reinvest back into the community. We've got Dan Wood, I'm sure most people know Dan. He's um, uh, the founder of the uh, Retro Art Podcast and um, uh, a big YouTuber. Um, he really works with me on a lot of things and he's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, Amiga Bill Winters, when these people have all agreed and signed up to do this uh, this role, basically what they're going to be doing, um, that's Andy Spencer. He runs a museum uh, in Leicester, the uh, Retro Computer Museum in Leicester. Um, Dave McBurtry, he's, he's a guy that you will have heard of recently because he's founded the Commodore Historical Society, uh, Commodore National Historical Society, and he's archiving a lot of material which we intend to work with him in on. Um, Paul Kitching, I mentioned him earlier on, he does all the graphics for me and my books and everything else. Um, great 3D artist. Um, I've also got um, uh, Sky Barrett, uh, he's from, uh, from Poland. Uh, Paolo, who I mentioned before, from Italy. Um, Cardo de Castro from Argentina. Um, uh, Joa Droeg, I think is how you pronounce it, from Germany. 
All of these guys are already involved in Komono and Omega in one way or another. Um, we've also begun appointing an, an advisory board to made up of significant industry figures who will support uh, the, the looking at new projects and whether we should invest in them. Mike Nerney, I'm sure you know um, Better Tech Mike. Uh, Thomas Markinowski from Poland. Um, there's a, a company called um, Pixel Magazine in Warsaw. And every year they have a big uh, Pixel Heaven exhibition, which is a retro exhibition. It's on in May this year, 26, 7 and 8 May. And they get in circa 6,000 people through there every year. And uh, Thomas uh, works very closely with Robert uh, Lepinski, who is the founder. And uh, Robert uh, Thomas is a very good, um, not very knowledgeable hardware person. Um, Paul Resendez in the USA, I'm sure you guys know of him. These are people that have agreed to work with, with us in making sure that when people uh, approach us, say we've got a product we want some support financially on, we examine it to make sure it's viable and a worthwhile. I mean, we're not going to win all of them, but at least we want to make sure that we're not just throwing money away for no reason. We've got uh, Marvin Drugsma in the Netherlands, Frank Linares in Canada, uh, Dave Haney. No, if you don't know Dave Haney, you shouldn't be on this, on this call. <laughs> Uh, Dave Dave Haney is absolutely fundamental. I mean, he and I have been friends for a very long time. He's 100% supportive of this project, and I think it's giving you some idea, indication of um, you know how this whole thing is being received. Right, I've got ready for, to add for other people because obviously I'm not stopping there. Um, I want people from around the world. Uh, and several people have applied to me. I just have not had the time yet to get back to them all to just determine. But I hope you can see from that that we are being very responsible about what we're going to be doing with the money that we hope this will raise. Okay, the anticipated launch date, this is going to be flexible. At the moment, I'm saying the 1st of May because we are working on the website now. But it's a big project and it may slip. I think people understand that. So what you also are the benefits of being a member, you get advance notice and access to new product releases. There'll be members discount, which I'm currently negotiating with everybody. We will vary between company and product. But the idea is that if you are a subscriber and you produce something and you can sell it to your, to other um, subscribers of AGA and give them a little bit of a discount, it works both ways. Now, everybody will receive a certificate. This is a copy of the certificate. Um, basically, it certifies that you are a fully paid up founding member and there will be different, you could be uh, in a member at different levels, that's what goes into there. Now, when I had these printed up, I foolishly put a date on it. Um, hey, nobody's perfect. Um, this, your membership will commence from the day that the website goes live. So whether it's 1st of May or the 1st of June or even it's not till November next year. Whenever the date, whenever it goes live, that's when your annual membership that you'll have paid thirty-eight pounds for will commence. I think it's as fair as I can be with that. Um, now, um, there's, I've got a couple of other things that I want to do, which were not part of this my initial Kickstarter. These are for later projects, but I want you to understand the magnitude of what AGA represents and what we plan for it. I want to establish a Commodore. Amiga not-for-profit foundation. This will be potential uh, to secure archiving Commodore and Amiga historical material, uh, potential collaboration with existing museums. Um, I can tell you I've already started dialogue with the Science Museum in London, which is actually where I launched this Amiga CD32, we did the worldwide launch from there. Um, and they, they already have you know, a big um, presentation of uh, Commodore products in the museum. Um, and basically I want uh, I want them and I intend to get in touch with um, uh, the Smithsonian um, to get them to, if I can, get them to agree so that we have a good presence of Commodore representation, Amiga representation across the pond. Uh, it won't stop there. There's lots of other museums who I already work very closely with. So the idea is that there'll be a presence in all these museums around the world which stands up and represents Commodore and the Amiga history. Well, I also want to establish as part of the foundation, the Hall of Fame to honor all of the significant contributors to the Commodore Amiga and its history. And I also want to establish an awards ceremony. And I'm talking about a top class event here. 
you know, where where it's a black tie event. Uh, th think of Emmys and, and uh, the Grammys. I'm talking about an event like that because we bloody deserve it. <laughs> right, and the third, the last thing that is part of the, the my remit for AGA is I'm astounded that the Jack Tramiel Commodore story has never been properly told, potentially in the form of a Hollywood movie. And I'm sure most of you must feel the same. I mean, his story, the Commodore story, is absolutely amazing. When you think about it, there is a gentleman who's rescued from Auschwitz by the American military, who immediately goes to the States and joins the American military to say thank you. He then opens up a little typewriter repair shop on the Bronx, from which he's built a billion dollar business. And it has everything in that story. It has ethos and pathos and it has greed and, and, and betrayal and, and, and you know, everything you can possibly imagine. It's a story that needs to be told. So I understand that even as a strong community, we can never, ever raise sufficient funds, the millions of dollars it would be it would take to fund a Hollywood movie. There's no way that we could do that. However, I do totally believe we could raise sufficient money, which is to establish what is known as a war chest. And the war chest is something set aside to allow the establishment of a negotiating team carefully selected to present a prepared proposal to Hollywood movie moguls the, and, or, and or the likes of Netflix, Prime, Apple TV and other, other like that, putting all the positives and benefits of producing such a movie or at the very worst, a television documentary series. Okay, so just a quick summary. Amiga Global Alliance, um, uh, all Commodore Amiga fans around the globe under one umbrella. Modest annual fee bringing massive community benefits. Best website for intensive and extensive resource. Financial support for developers or of hardware or software. Variable member discounts from fellow member sellers. Advertising marketing funds to promote members' activity. Thousands of fans, clubs, developers, retailers, technicians, magazines, wholesale component suppliers, and many more are now collaborating and growing our favorite community. Now, if that was not enough reason to subscribe, here's the bonus bumper bundle that I'm offering for, for your £38 membership. Um, this is what you're going to be getting. You're going to be getting the ebooks of Comedy of the Inside Story and uh, the Vultures of Vampire videos that were released last year. Commodore the um, uh, Alive and Kicking and Amiga Alive and Kicking, plus the Viva Amiga Remix, which is the one that has the hour and 40 minutes of additional material from the original one, which most people have not seen. And I know that because I've been selling it. I'm the only person I'm selling it. And hardly anybody has been getting onto it. <clears throat> also, there's a brand new 64 game called Cosmic Force. As a download, there are two. There is a, 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 a either DVD or Blu ray of some outtakes that I did not put into the book um, about what happened at Commodore, including a couple of quite naughty things that on, put on the edge. <laughs> also, there's a music CD download. Uh, at the end of Commodore, I went, uh, I opened up a music studio, and most people you know I was a musician long before uh, I ever got into sales and marketing. And I wanted to uh, produce this concept album called Everybody's Girlfriend, which of course is what Amiga means. And it's a, we did a 14 tracks. Uh, it's all live music, which is, I must hasten to, to tell you, this is not computer-based music. I don't like computer-based music very much, to be honest with you. Uh, being a real musician, you like live music. This is live music, live vocals. And we've got people on there, for example, there's a girl doing some of the vocals on there called Angie Brown. She was the lead singer with Bizarre Inc. She's, she's worked with some of the best um, uh, musicians, musicians in the world. I was only reading about this a couple of days ago. Lovely girl. Um, anyway, it's 14 tracks. And on there, there are all different genres of music. The reason being is that the only thing that we knew about our target audience was that they either had an Amiga or they wanted to buy one. So we, what we decided to do was we put 14 different genres of music on there. Uh, and I'm talking about this blues track, um, there's rock and there's ballads, and this sort of thing. Um, including, I, I humbly say, there's one track on there that I recorded. I, I, as I said, I used to play flamenco. And I recorded a track which I wrote and recorded as a homage to J Minor. That's on there as well. Um, plus there's a song that I wrote that I'm not actually involved in, but 
if the other musicians played it. But anyway, it's a whole variety of music, and, and I was forced to re-release it because people loved it so much. Anyway, that's a free download. And I'm also gonna, I'm gonna be pushing this, why not? Um, there's a band called um, Satya, and they that includes my two sons. Actually, it's my two sons' band. They're an eight-piece band, and they did it. They went into the studio and recorded this track uh, album, uh, which is called Rising Sun. And um, they're basically it's reggae and reggae dub, um, and it's bloody good stuff. I swear to. You. So I'm including that as a download. So now you get all of that plus your year subscription for your thirty-eight quid. That ain't bad in anybody's books, you know, however you look at it. However, just on the case that that's not enough, now as the means of income due to be superb, these are the products, let's go through them quickly. There's the inside story, you can get an ebook or audio book format. Um, Vultures to Vampires, um, and that goes, I think it's from 1995 to 2005, about all the lawsuits, and, and if I can tell you, if if even a fraction of the products that were being developed ever got to market, the Amiga would be in a completely different place right now. And anyway, from that, we've now got volume two and volume three coming. Okay, the, the, the release in 2022 was the Commodore Alive and Kicking, this Waven Studios, this inside look at the Commodore journey, lots of interesting interviews, uh, the extended remix of, of um, uh, Viva, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Viva Amiga, and so that's got an hour and 40 minutes of extra um, footage that most people have not seen. Um, the Amiga Live and Kicking, which is similar to the Commodore one, but it's specifically about the Amiga. Um, then there's the 64 game, Cosmic Force. All of these are for downloading. Right? And then you've got the choice of either DVD or Blu-ray, whichever you want, uh, downloading this, um, which I've been selling on its own. Um, as a uh, as, as an interesting download, it's, so it's interviews with me that, um, and some of them not in the hardback book. Um, and then there's everybody's girlfriend, and then um, the, the Satya album, uh, Rising Sun, which I I defy anybody when you listen to it to not like it. It's really phenomenal stuff. Okay, now then. I've also done what we're calling the uh, uh, Bumper Bonus Bundle Deluxe. And what that is, that is that if you want to um, pay the difference and not have the downloads of the books, I'll actually send you the hardback books, but I'll send them just for the cost of the postage. So you're not paying any extra just for the cost of it. I can't, I can't fund that. It's just impossible for me to fund it. Um, but it's it's not expensive. It's um, I think it's seven pound a book, uh, poach and packing in the UK uh, for one book, and, and obviously fourteen two. Because the problem is that both the books are just over one kilo in weight, and once you go over two kilos, you don't get any benefit in in, in the cost. It's easier and better to send it to individually, and anybody in the world can buy it. And all they do is to pay the postage. I can I can tell you for the USA, it's thirteen pounds a book. Uh, that's the lowest I can get it down to um, because I've, we've done a deal. Actually, they, all of these books are going to be shipped from, outside of the UK, are going to be shipped from Germany. Um, there's a double reasons that. One is that we ship volume one from the UK. And of course, we, the UK had left the EU and we got hit with loads and loads and loads of import duty problems. So now I've got, got a company all ready to do all the shipping outside of the UK from Germany into the European Union, into Scandinavia, into the rest of the world, and they've got a better deal. Um, however, this um, deluxe version will be included with everything above the the, at the individual's membership. So if you were the, 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 the standalone uh, repairer and it cost you 75 pounds a year, you will get this with the hardback books included. The same thing with all the other levels. So the idea is that um, you know it's it's an even better deal um, because um, obviously it, it makes sense. A lot of people want the real book, and I understand that because there's nothing better than having a beautiful book, and they are quality. If anybody, any of you've got them, you know what I'm talking about. The quality of the books are fantastic. So now, whilst we encourage you to subscribe now, of course we've already commenced building the website. Delivery of the bonus bumper bundle will be within a few days of the Kickstarter reaching its goal. Now, 
I have to be honest with you, I've been putting off launching the Kickstarter because until I can start shipping at least the ebooks for volume two, I, I would understand there could be reticence from anybody who's already paid me a year ago for a book and haven't got it. <clears throat> so what's happening is that in the next two or three days, hopefully we will have um, the ebook versions of um, volume two. <coughs> Excuse me, love. And uh, uh, as soon as that they're ready, then I will ship those out. And then I will launch the Kickstarter. So it might be two or three weeks. But the whole concept is that the Kickstarter is asking people to you know, pay your £38, get your membership, everything you get everything as as is described, and we, we can then proceed from there. And I hope you understand my rationale and reasoning for this. Um, so subscribe today to help the building of the, of the, web, the website. Once the Kickstarter reaches its target, your certificate will be prepared, but your annual fee will not commence until the AJA directory goes live. Um, so... Basically, it's an opportunity for you guys to con contribute your own ideas, your thoughts, and uh, and watch them being turned into the most powerful de facto mark of excellence. And it's use usurps and need to pay for for using a, a logo that's been out of date for thirty years. Um, but just remember, we have not launched yet. So I've got these are uh, references from people about AGA. This is one from. Um, uh, Andy Spencer from uh, Retro Computer Museum. Um, there's one from Dave Haney, uh, one from Amiga Bill. These are all the people saying why they're backing it. Uh, Mike, uh, Retro Tech Mike. Um, and uh, this is Bart Van, Van der Aken, who's got the, the Computer Museum in Helmond in, in, uh, in uh, Holland. Um, he's backing it. I mean, I could put loads and loads and more of these up, but I, I don't want to bore you. Thank you very much for your attention. I really appreciate it. Um, and I'm sort of open to questions now. Questions from the audience? Uh, David, can you hear me? I have questions. Yes, just one moment. I'll close this up. OK. OK, you're, you're, we can see you big yeah, and large. Size. On the big sixty-five good, inch, good, good. sixty-five inch screen. So uh, uh, good. So I, I'm a little bit confused. Well, first of all, I should get a general reaction. What, what do you think? Do okay. I get a round of applause? I'm a little bit confused. Is this a Kickstarter for a subscription service, or is this a subscription, you, or or you broke up then? Oh, okay. Is this a Kickstarter, or is this? For a subscription, it's a sub it's annual subscription. So it's it's not a Kickstarter. It it is it is a subscription service. The Kickstarter is for you. Yes, it is a Kickstarter, but it, it's it's you agreeing to join the the AGA and pay your thirty eight pounds, oh. um, or whatever level you want to to get involved in, um, and, and, and that means that you're signed up. Obviously, anybody who joins, if they want to pull out after a year, they can do so. It's not, you know, you're not signed into life. And uh, where do we find this Kickstarter? Oh, there's one other thing I forgot to mention too, which um, and the only reason I forgot to mention is because I'm only just working on it. Uh, I've now every time I do a Kickstarter, if any of you ever backed my Kickstarters, I always give away a nice prize. Uh, for example, when I did um, Commodore: The Inside Story. I was originally giving away an A on A1222, but we ended up giving away an, an A on 5000 full system um, as, as one lucky um, draw prize winner from those people who backed the Kickstarter. Um, when I did the Vultures of Vampires, we gave away a Vampire 4 standalone as a prize. And for this Kickstarter, I'm giving away a Mini MiG, the latest version Mini wow. MiG in a crystal case. So that will be part of the of the Kickstarter as another encouragement for you guys to join and, and back it. Where do we find the Kickstarter? You will be getting that information, uh, info at, at uh, amigagloballiance.com. Um, that's a live um, email right now. And I, 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 I can be, I'll be sending that out anyway afterwards. I'll, I'll be letting everybody know when it is. It's gonna be within the next couple of weeks is my guess. Oh, okay. 
Um, so uh, on the, the, the AGA directory, uh, yes, you are supporting classic machines. Are you supporting like new new machines like the Amiga One? We we will support whatever the community asks us to support. That's what we're there for. We want to grow the community in whatever manifestation it it, it morphs into. So that means you you will support uh, like uh, Morph OS and AROS and OS four point one. Yeah, absolutely. If it's a community requirement, then then it will be there. This is going to be the most the most um, uh, full information center that you can possibly get. Everything that you can possibly want. Uh, I mean, I don't know everything that everybody wants, but all I'm saying is that you tell us what you want, and if it's if it's physically possible to do, it will be done. Uh, Here is a, a, another question. Um, Suppose I am a company, and I'm not a company, but so, suppose I am a company and I've developed something for the Amiga based on the Raspberry Pi. So right. how would I go about receiving funding or a, a grant, I'll say a grant, from yes. AGA? Right. Well, it depends on where you're based. For example, you, you guys are based in the USA, so it would be it would go. I would send it to uh, Dave Haney and also to Paul Rezanez because they're both in the USA and okay. say what do you think of this guy so they come back to me and and it's, it's decided upon for the governance that yes this is a worthwhile project so and, in other words what we're trying to do is to we're trying to avoid scammers because there's always going to be some right, of those around right um, but we we want to endorse anything which looks like it has a chance to succeed um so uh if if if, if it, this product is developed for for a company, um, the AGA, how much would the AGA give in a grant? Would it be? Are we talking about uh, a few dollars, hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars? That's how long is a piece of string. I mean, I don't know the extent of support that AGA is going to get. The more support we get, all I can tell you is that we are we are allocating sixty five percent of whatever comes in. Will be going back into the community, and that if we get a hundred thousand dollars, sixty five thousand dollars goes back into the community. If we get a million dollars, six hundred fifty thousand dollars goes back into the community. It's an it's actually a question I can't answer, but the answer is that it will be at least sixty five percent of what revenue we get in, but and, that has to be allocated between between projects. And the people who decide this is it up to what you the people that you have shown us on on your video right now those people are like the board of directors yes it, it's that's a good way of calling them. they're actually um you can call them as similar to board members we call them advisors board advisors but they are going to be ensuring the governance that we have and how we spend the money is not wasted okay uh, uh just one more thing i mean we're running out of time here on the zoom call uh, just an aside, uh, J.J. Abrams of <laughs> Hollywood producer, director, he is a big Commodore fan. What? So that's just, right. a, just a little insight there if you want to talk about Hollywood moguls. There you go. All right. Okay. okay. Well, I mean, well, I mean, but let's be honest about it. We've got the story itself, as I've said before, is absolutely astonishing. But remember, we've got on video... We've got um, Debbie Harry and Andy Warhol live on video launching the Amiga. I mean, bloody hell, that's, that's gold. That's movie gold, that is, in <laughs> itself. <laughs> oh, uh, before I let you go, one last question. Uh, uh, are you going to give, uh, uh, for the AGA director, are you going to give any like uh, like kind of importance or uh, at least a, a nod to us 8-bit users also? Commodore 8-bit users. Yeah, can I just explain something to you? Then you'll understand. When I first started this, it was going to be Commodore Amiga Global Alliance, or Carga for short. However, <laughs> no, 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 however, no. listen, listen to this. I went to I went to Italy to yeah. that uh, Passione Amiga uh, magazine open day, and I told everybody we're going to call it Carga, and they came up to me after and said, "Do you know that Carga 
in Italian and in Spanish, embracing everything Commodore. Right. We we lost you again, Dave, well, for the translation of Kaga, even though I know what that means. Okay, I'll, I'll repeat that again because it is important. <laughs> we dropped the C, but C Commodore is always meant to be... In, you can't have Amiga without Commodore. Sorry, we, we, you can't. We lost, it, it didn't exist without Commodore. We lost you again for the second time, Dave. So, Kaga, yeah. Kaga we're in a, we're in a stands here. for... It's not gonna. They can't have a bigger one than the Commodore. It's crap. Uh, it needs it. Okay, we, we are letting you go, Dave, because our, our our connection is breaking up. But thank you very much. We'll get him to explain it. Are you excited? Yeah. Yes, I'm excited. Thank you, Dave. Is everybody else? I get a round of applause. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye-bye now. Bye. See you all. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. The Commodore Los Angeles Super Show.